pessoal, eu sou o Thiago Vieira. Eu sou o Jean Regina e você está no Direito Religioso, numa viagem especialíssima aqui em Plymouth, Massachusetts, Estados Unidos, né Thiago? Isso, essa, esse será o primeiro vídeo de uma série de vídeos que faremos aqui em Plymouth, onde nasceu no Estado moderno a laicidade e a liberdade religiosa. Claro, Jean, a laicidade e a liberdade religiosa já estava sendo estudada, ensaiada é. antes, mas o laboratório foi clima. Exatamente, nós estamos aqui num lugar muito especial, o Yellow Deli, você vai ver umas imagens aí, que é um, um, um lugar mágico, fantástico, que é gerido pela comunidade das 12 tribos, uma comunidade religiosa muito bacana, que está em presente em vários países, inclusive no Brasil, com quem temos a honra de trabalhar. E aqui no Yellow Deli, eles têm quadros que representam essa saga dos separatistas, que vão mostrando... Como e por que a liberdade religiosa é tão importante para nós hoje né? E, e o resultado que nós temos hoje através da luta que eles tiveram. Então vocês vão vir conosco e vai ter muito trabalho legal. Por favor, não deixem de ficar com a gente. Essa entrada vai ser um pouco mais longa, mas as outras prometemos que vai ser só nosso nome mesmo, porque o que a gente quer é ouvir o Barzel. Então, Éder, roda, roda a vinheta! vinheta! Now, what about this painting here? Well, in Brazil. 1608, the, uh, the separatists of Scrooby found a home in Holland. They arrived in Amsterdam, to, uh, which was the largest port of Holland. And it was uh, there they found abilities to do work, and they found a, English, a sizable English group of uh, patriots that were, um, that were separatists already. The uh, Reverend Smith, uh, John Smith, uh, Famous of fame of the Baptist movement was already established there in, in Amsterdam and was quite well known to the, the, the Scooby Separatists. But John Robinson, the pastor of the, of the Separatists of Scooby, felt that it was not wise for them to stay in Amsterdam and associate with the, uh, the, the Smith congregation and other congregations that were there. He felt there was too much controversy. He felt that the disruptions that those groups would experience in the next few years, he anticipated. And he felt that it would be better if the community, the small little group he had, would find their home in a better, calmer place. So they went to Leiden, the second largest city of Holland at that time, but it was a seaport. So the work opportunities were not as good. They, it was a center of the cloth trade. Hundreds of thousands of dollars, of, uh, hundreds, of thousands of, hundreds of thousands of pieces of cloth were prepared and finished and sold from Leiden. And so they got there, they, they, they bought some land, built a house for their pastor, built a number of small homes for themselves and found what homes they could in, in and around the uh, area of Leiden. And they, they immediately developed a life of uh, working hard from dawn to dusk. The tolling of the bell of the cloth, the cloth market marked their days beginning and end, 12 hours. And they, uh, they were, uh, their hard work they told them that they were, uh, they, they were doing what they felt was right for their families. But they discovered that there was a tension there. They discovered that they were finding that they, 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 they couldn't educate their children as freely as they wanted to because of the hours that were there. And they found that over the years, over the uh, 12 years that they lived in, in Holland, that the young people that grew up in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the community were coming to realize that they were immigrants and second-class citizens of Holland. That's the rules that you were a land immigrant. You got work. Work was freely available to you, but it was low wage. And, it not, and you couldn't get... Oh, good trades and good jobs, unless you are a citizen, you had to fully, fully uh, naturalize. And the uh, the um, the Scooby people were uncomfortable with that. They felt the Dutch culture was too lenient with the children, and they felt that there was too much. The, the Dutch church was not zealous enough, and they 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 did. They respected the Dutch. They were thankful for them, but they felt that they couldn't give themselves to it, and they began to discuss if they could do something else because they're young people being caught up in what was, this was a Dutch moment. This was called the Golden Age of Holland, this time period. Holland is sending uh, expeditions, trading expeditions and military expeditions to Brazil, to uh, Ceylon, to uh, the coast of New Guinea, all over the world, to Japan, China. And so they were expanding, and so there was a lot of activity. And so their young people were joining the trading voyages, 
and they were also joining the uh, military formations that were forming in preparation for the oncoming 30 Years' War. The, the truce between Ireland and Spain was about to end. And the, uh, the pressure on the young people was that they could find a better life as full Dutch participants in this golden moment. But their parents and didn't see it as such a golden moment. They saw it as a distraction. And so the ones that really cared about their families and their future agreed that they would go to America. A very difficult choice. I mean, they had hardly any resources to draw on, but they felt that they needed to do it. And so they made arrangements. They tried to make arrangements with the King, King James, but King James was not mad at them. Now that they're in Holland, he didn't bother, they didn't bother him. So they, he agreed that they could go to America and he wouldn't bother them, but he wouldn't give them license. He wouldn't give them any authority to own land or a, or a trading company of their own. He, he just, he said, they, they were just there on their own. And so they had to find somebody to sponsor them. So they made, they found some investors in London that uh, made arrangements with them. And the investors made the arrangements for the voyage. And in 1620, they, they left Holland. And they, before they left Holland, they, their, their pastor, John Robinson, who agreed to stay with the uh, people that were remaining of their congregation in Holland, more chose to stay in Holland and become Dutch than chose to go to immigrate to England, to America. And so uh, John Robinson told them that there was yet more light to break forth from God's word. That the, the, uh, the work of restoration from the long centuries of darkness since the fall of the early church in the first centuries before the Christianity became a legal re religion was, uh, was going to take a long time to recover. And they couldn't expect that the work of Calvin and Luther was sufficient. That there had to be more that would come. And they needed to be open to it, even if it went beyond what he himself had taught. That was a strong, striking message he gave uh, there on the show in Delfshaven, right outside of uh, Amsterdam. And they boarded a vessel and went to England. And they, uh, they, they, they wanted, you could see, their concern for their children was paramount to them. And that was, that was what was moving them to, uh, to the new world. Você vê que, que saga sensacional, né? Ou seja, não é apenas é a luta pela liberdade religiosa, é uma luta gigante, mas também para estabelecer uma nação. Ou seja, um povo que quer espaço para poder comerciar, para poder é, criar sua família, para poder cuidar dos seus filhos dentro de acordo com as suas convicções religiosas mais íntimas. Isso faz com que eles já tinham saído da Inglaterra, vão para a Holanda, como o Barzel falou, vão chegam a Leiden, fazem todo um esforço e, e veem no comportamento daquele povo que apesar de estar num lugar muito melhor, ainda não era aquilo que eles sentiam que era a sua necessidade. Então fazem essa escolha difícil para ir para a Inglaterra em 1620 e seguem então a sua jornada. É simplesmente sensacional, continua com a gente nessa aula aí. Tenho certeza que você não vai perder. Muito bom.